Hey, and uh, welcome uh, to my uh, my office. I am Joel Rosenfeld, uh, Dr. Joel Rosenfeld, and um, Giacomo Michele, uh, Dr. Giacomo Michele, uh, has asked me to help him out with developing a whole bunch of LaTeX uh, um, tutorials. I, I had to record this in uh, bits and pieces. I correct some things, and so there might be a few jumps uh, in, in the recording. Um, but yeah, uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So uh, we're going to cover figures and tables, and um, it, all in LaTeX, and, and in fact we're also going to do it uh, using Overleaf, uh, which is uh, a fairly um, uh, essential tool uh, for collaboration these days. Um, I use it for everything, and um, everything from my CV to uh, sharing these files with you. So, uh, so yeah, um, sit in here with me, and um, I, I'm gonna cut awkwardly, and uh, and we're gonna see a little bit more uh, discussion about this topic. This video, uh, I I've been asked to to show you how to do say tables, and um, I, and uh, figures. Uh, so I'm gonna show you several different ways you can approach this. Um, there is uh, the figure, just basic figures where you just put an image in. Uh, it's going to use your, your figure environment and then include graphics, etc. And if you use uh, like Overleaf, which you really should, um, then once you type in begin figure and press enter, it'll fill all this out for you with uh, the label, the caption, and the include graphics bit. But there's a few modifiers you can put on that include graphics to uh, say scale your image, make them a bit different sizes and whatnot. Uh, there's a scale command, there's a width command to give you a fixed width and then it automatically adjusts the height of your image. Um, and that's a really good way to start. If you want to include multiple images in there, uh, there's a, a few tricks that you can do to make it sure that they're all in the same row or that you have multiple rows or etc. Um, and then uh, after I show you the figure package, I'm going to show you the, the wrap fig package, which is nice if you want to do something that you would see more in like, say, Word, uh, where you have an image that's shifted over to like a, one side and then text is wrapped around it. It's kind of clumsy, uh, but I can show you some tricks that you can play with it until it gets right. Um, this is really important whenever you're, say, writing a, um, a grant or something uh, that has a page limit and you want to kind of cram everything in. And so, uh, so sometimes the wrap fig uh, comes in there. Um, there's some other adjustments for figures that are sort of the opposite of this. Um, so there's uh, a, a few modifiers that you can do for two column formats to make a figure uh, span both columns rather than just one column. And, uh, and yeah, I think uh, we'll just keep it to wrap fig and fig in the figure uh, package. Um, and then as far as tables go, uh, I'm going to cheat out of this a little bit and I'm going to tell you that you should never put together tables yourself uh, for LaTeX. Um, there is a nice uh, tool online called Table Generator and that will handle everything way better than you'll ever be able to do it. You can import CSV files, you can import files from Excel, and it'll turn it into a, um, a table for you uh, formatted in the way that LaTeX would. And you can export the LaTeX and or, and put it back into your document, and so now you're done. Um, they'll sometimes have a little bit of extra things that you want to put in there uh, for your headers and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's it's actually um, really straightforward to use. And uh, and then so I'll show you how to do that too. And uh, and then we'll we'll tie all this together and we'll make some uh, lorem ipsum package text. Uh, and uh, and then we'll um, uh, throw all these things so you can see. Uh, sort of a, a nice LaTeX environment. Anyways, uh, why don't we go ahead and get started. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So what I have uh, pulled up here is uh, a, uh, an overlay file, uh, which I'll give you guys a link to uh, if you want to come and just play around with the, uh, uh, with the code, uh, just to get some examples. Um, let me put it back. I actually already recorded this and uh, failed to save it. So uh, yeah, so we have to do it over again. So I'm reformatting everything and, uh, and maybe it'll go smoother this time than it did last time. In any case, uh, so let me go ahead and start screen recording and, uh, and yeah, so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, cool. So uh, here we go. Uh, so this is a, uh, a LaTeX file that I made. Um, it's, uh, I'm calling it LaTeX Tutorial on Figures and Tables. Um, 
yeah, it's more or less uh, uh, what the goal is. And um, yeah, I'm using the, uh, the Lipsum package because then we can use uh, the Lorem Ipsum uh, text. Uh, and so it's called that because I think if you put to one, so you can see the first paragraph uh, over here, uh, yeah, it starts with Lorem Ipsum. So uh, generally, this is just some dummy text that goes in. Uh, Photoshop also has Lorem Ipsum text if you want to throw it into a document just see what it'll look like. It's generally used by designers because uh, there's enough variety in the word length and things like that so that you get some good wrapping. And, um, and yeah, so. Uh, so it's pretty common to see that. Um, and so it serves our purpose because I don't want to make up a whole bunch of dummy text uh, just to show you a few tricks. In any case, uh, so over here on the left, I have a bunch of images I imported from my, uh, my one of my most recent papers. And uh, one, it's on my mind. And two, uh, it shows you that you can actually, uh, between different uh, overlay uh, documents, you can actually share the same files so that um, you don't have to actually use up all your overleaf uh, space, uh, you know, it, just for duplicate files. So, I guess, uh, so here uh, I'm going to show you how to make a basic figure. Uh, first thing you need is the uh, graphic X package or the graphics package where you put an S here. Uh, the graphic X package will allow us to use a lot of scaling and uh, width parameters. Uh, that are very convenient, so I prefer to use that. So let's go ahead and start. Um, so in here we go begin, uh, figure, and uh, press enter. And so uh, Overleaf, uh, as gracious as it is, I filled this in for us. So if we take a look, uh, we're in the figure environment, and inside of here we they added the centering command for us, so that's going to center it on the page, generally something you want. And uh, it has a space for include graphics. That's where we're going to put our, our figure. And, uh, and then there's a caption where you can say, uh, hello, everyone. I am making figures. All right. And, uh, and here, this is the label so we can refer to it within the document later. Um, fit, having fig there is not necessary. You can put you know, whatever you want in here. Um, but uh, having a fig is, is nice because when you're calling up references, um, you might have a lot of things with very similar names, and having fig will tell you, hey, this is a figure. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll call this first figure. Okay. So in here, uh, let's go ahead and put in some graphics. So here, uh, image, uh, and this is mode 13. All right. Uh, so this is from my paper. It's an EPS file, which are generally really good as far as scalability goes. And so if you want something that's going to be reliable when it comes to print, you generally want EPS files. Uh, you can use JPEG and PNGs, but keep in mind that if you have a really low resolution JPEG or PNG, they're going to look terrible when they're printed at, say, 300 DPI um, when it comes to actual printing of these things. Um, one way to get around that is to use EPS files. Uh, so if you have a graph, it'll still look sharp. Uh, and this is, EPS stands for Encapsulated Postscript. It's sort of the predecessor for PDF. It was made by Adobe before they invented the PDF document format. And uh, and yeah, so uh, it's actually what put uh, Adobe on the map before they made Photoshop back in the 1980s. And I guess uh, that's all neither here nor there. Uh, so if you take a look, uh, I put in here uh, this image and uh, it's, it's huge. I mean, look, that is way bigger than what we'd ever want. Um, and so uh, there's a few ways we can do it, and it comes down to putting uh, things inside of uh, square brackets in here. Uh, one way to, to reduce it, and I used to do this all the time before I figured out the other way. Um, so I can put in um, scale 0 0.5. So this will automatically scale it to be half the size of what, it, what we see in here. And now we have to chase it down and see where it went. And there. So now it actually fits on the page, and that's nice. But you know, maybe we want to put a whole lot of the, these figures together or something. Um, or maybe that's just too big for us. And so another thing you do is you can say width equals one, uh, and then you have to get some sort of unit. Uh, we can put inches, centimeters, whatever you want. Uh, this will correspond to uh, whatever it will look like in print. So keep in mind this is eight, uh, eight and a half by 11. And so uh, putting uh, one inch should be about a little bit less than one eighth of a page. And there you go, really tiny. Okay. Uh, so that's a little too tiny. Uh, I'm going to make it two inches. 
And so it automatically keeps the uh, aspect ratio. So if you uh, change it to two, it automatically scales the, width the height as well. Okay, cool. Well, there we go. Um, so that is our first image. And so, uh, hello everyone. I'm making a figure. It's figure one. Uh, so uh, what we can do is we can go in here and uh, if we want to have more than just one uh, picture in for a single figure, uh, we can add more. So I'll say include graphics. We'll keep it width equals two inches and, um, and we'll put in imaginary mode 15. And so I hit recompile, and there we go. We have the first two figures in here now. Uh, so uh, if I wanted, I can keep this going. I can put in include graphics uh, width equals two inches. Um, imaginary mode, uh, let's go 16. OK. And uh, let's see what it does. All right, so now, because the next image was going to exceed the width here. It bumped it down uh, to the next row. If you want to have more control over that yourself, uh, what you can do is you can put a break here. And now, while a lot of programming languages just ignore white space, uh, LaTeX doesn't. Um, so when you have an extra space in here, it actually means something. So uh, if we take a look, uh, you'll see that it actually moved uh, that 15 down to over here. And, um, and so I... Uh, so then we can have multiple uh, pictures within the same uh, within the same figure, and so uh, I can wrap this up and uh, let's just put one more in here, have a nice square. There we go. Okay, and hit recompile and see what happens. Boom. All right, so that's done. Okay. Uh, so now, um, let's go ahead and uh, put a little reference in here. Oh, it looks like I already uh, had that here. Um, this is leftover from the last time I, I made this, and it looks like I chose exactly the same label. Who knew? Anyway, um, so in here, I put in some text in here. Uh, this is, is comes in later. I would like to tell you about my awesome figure, figure whatever. Uh, usually, before you call a ref, ref is just going to give you a number, and so you need to put something here, and so uh, that's what it gives you. And so uh, here are some text that comes a little later, and I'd like to tell you about my awesome figure. Okay, great. Now I'm going to make a little modification, uh, and we're going to see something happen. So uh, you see that I reduced an amount of text, uh, changed a, little, a few things, and suddenly the text is actually above my figure, but in my code, uh, in the LaTeX, it's below it. And so what what LaTeX does, is, or LaTeX does, is it actually puts the image where it thinks it is best for it to go. You can have some control over that, but not a lot. Um, so for instance, uh, I can put this command H, and that'll tell it I want this figure here, in this very specific place. You generally shouldn't use that, uh, but here it makes no difference, uh, just because it, apparently LaTeX can't handle that anyway. Um, you could also give it its own page if you wanted it to go off and do its own thing. And so if I put P here, um, now uh, the, the figure is just given its own isolated page. This is really handy if you have a huge figure and there's no point in having text around it. Um, but in this case, um, this isn't actually all that huge. Okay, so uh, now let's take a look at something else you can do with figures. And this is wrap fig. And so um, sometimes uh, you want it to behave a little bit like Word. And, um, and so you would like to uh, be able to wrap uh, text around your, uh, your figures and, uh, and not like break off an entire horizontal piece here, uh, like what we have here. And so uh, that comes with the wrap figure thing. And Overleaf actually has a, a nice little LaTeX manual in here if you want to use it. And so I, if we're going to use the wrap fig, we need to use the wrap fig package, and you can see that I've already put that here. I uh, and uh, let's go ahead and take their example, and we'll play with that a little bit. But they give you all the sort of different parameter values, so you can have it on the right side of the text, left side of the text, um, and outside edge far from the binding. I don't even know what that is, but it's something you can do. We could play with it, but. Uh, 
No, I'll let you do that on your own. Um, here, let's go ahead and put this in here. Uh, so, to actually copy that, um, let's go in here and put it here. Alright, so uh, birds isn't going to work for us. We'd actually have to use one of our own things. Um, let's use imaginary mode 13. And, uh, yeah, this is the imaginary part of the 13th uh, Levo mode determined by our algorithm. Okay. So, uh, so I'm going to throw that in here and let's just see what happens. So, uh, there we go. We see that the captions kind of messed up and, and that happens. Um, that it isn't the, the best. Um, here it's, let's see. So this is a width command. Uh, it's telling us how much of the width here that everything should take up. And so here it's 0 0.5 and this is a neat little trick you can do, uh, slash text width. And so um, this is saying half, of, so this is the text width from here to here, and it says it should be half of that. And so uh, that's exactly what it does. And so I carved that out. And what is the size of the image? Well, it should be 0.48 text width, so just a little bit smaller. Um, what we could do is we can change this to 3, and we can change this to say 3.5, and um, let's see what happens. Ooh, there we go, even smaller but nicely tucked into the corner if you need it out of the way. This is really handy if you're doing things like grant writing or any papers that have sort of a page limit. Uh, it's a way of embedding your, your, um, your image in there uh, while still giving room for text to go uh, around it. And so you can get some more words in there, get some more content in uh, per square inch. Um, so uh, it's always a good hand thing to have on hand. Um, let's see, what else can I do here? Uh, I could change this from R to L, and uh, we'll get to see it jump over to the other side. Boop, there you go. And uh, yeah, I always forgot. I always forget how I managed to get this to stop overlaying. Um, let me see. Maybe I can do this. So, uh, V space often is the the thing to play with. Um, this will insert a blank space. Um, so let's just say uh, five inches. Let's see what that happens. If anything's gonna happen, it'll happen in five inches. And absolutely nothing happened there. All right, that did not help us. Uh, maybe on the caption it'll help. Nope, didn't help there either. Okay, and here, maybe? Oh, okay, that moved that all the way down. Okay, so that's the spot to put it. Um, so something you could do is you can put in negative 0 0.2 and so it'll choke up everything a little bit and hopefully that'll give us space for our uh, caption um, not quite yet uh, there we go and uh, let's see uh, maybe I can put in v space 0 0.1 inch does that help me? Nope, nope, that did not help me. Anyway, so that's something you can play with a little bit uh, if you wanted to. Uh, 0 0.1, all right, my last, my last hurrah. Let's see if this works, 0.3. I get this working with enough manipulation uh, and that really did not help, okay. Um, but yeah, so this, is, this bit can be a little bit finicky. Wrap fig is not the cleanest uh, way to go about it, but with enough uh, toying with these things, um, you can get something uh, to work out. Uh, let's see. Alright, I'm just sort of stubborn. Maybe we can do it here. V space uh, 0 0.2 inches. Probably won't help us at all. Oh, that's definitely not help. But maybe negative 0.2 inches. At least the caption moved. Uh, negative 0.3. Alright, and let's see. Let's do negative point four here, and we'll move uh, the figure itself up. V space negative zero point three. Ha! Inch. Alright. Swear it's the last one, then we'll move on to the next thing. 
Okay. All right. At least everything's in there. Uh, so you can manipulate that until you get exactly the sort of like thing you're looking for. Okay. So now after this, what we're going to be looking to do is we're going to be talking about, um, well, actually let's talk about the two column format. There's one more thing I want to show you. Um, so, uh, some articles, like if you're submitting to IEEE, uh, insist on you having uh, two column formats. This actually allows you to put more text into, into the space. And with IEEE transactions now having a page limit of 10 pages for their big journal publications, they charge you up to about 15 pages and they don't let you do anything else. Um, really kind of scammy, especially cause since nobody prints anything anymore. It's just a way of making money. Anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, IEEE requires two column. It wouldn't be this article format, it'd be their IEEE transactions. Uh, but uh, this is something that comes up. So then you see what happens is that you have uh, this um, two column format. And now this thing that was a nice figure, which was like a two by two figure, uh, is now being crammed into one column. And it looks kind of nasty and, and ugly. Uh, one thing you can do to uh, insist that it spans uh, both columns is to put an asterisk on the figure environment and there we go it sort of gave it its own space uh, where nothing is sort of uh, happening around it so it's sort of the opposite of what wrap fig does and wrap fig is really not doing good over here um, but I wouldn't use wrap fig in a, in a two column format anyway uh, but yeah that's what you get so that's a lot of things you can do with figures and uh, honestly with the those handful of tricks that'll get that'll keep you going for like the next decade before you're into something you can't do. Um, there's other things you can try, uh, which would be subfig, uh, where you can put a caption next to each one of these images uh, of their own. Um, and you can look into the subfig package, package yourself. Uh, okay, so now let's talk about tables. Um, the trick to tables is you don't do your own tables. Um, in LaTeX, uh, there is a really nice web page. It's called Tables Generator. And Tables Generator will make the, the table for you. So you can see there's a bit of LaTeX here, and you might be tempted to go and edit it, uh, but don't. Um, up here, you can uh, put everything that you want. So you can say, um, I uh, love sushi up here. And, um, and then you put numbers in, because you know, it's a math thing. And, uh, and then you say, um, yeah, I don't know, I have more numbers. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so then you can say generate table, boom, there you go. Uh, if you need an extra column, you say, right click and say, add a column to the right. And then bye, you have a new column. Or you can say, add a row below. And boom, you have more place to put random numbers. Right, and, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, the content of this table is diminishing as I go. Uh, so I uh, other things you can do in here is you can bold them, underline them. I uh, if you wanted to do it, you can uh, go ahead and put a uh, whole bunch of lines here. Uh, or if you want to put them one at a time, uh, you can click this little arrow thing and you can add whole bunch of little arrows like that or not arrows but a whole bunch of little lines and so there you go it's a really quick and easy way to, to make tables and it'll save you hours and hours of work um, other things you can do is you can import from a CSV file so I uh, and if you were working with Excel and a whole bunch of data in Excel and you want to export that table to LaTeX for a paper for some reason, you'll never have a huge table to do that with, uh, or you should never do that. Um, but you can export to a CSV file from Excel and you can import that here and it'll give you the table here. Um, it just gives you the same table, so there's not really much for me to show. You can do the formatting afterwards. CSV files don't carry any formatting with them, it just tells them what the columns are. Um, but yeah, uh, so you can uh, even import it table from LaTeX code, apparently. You can save tables, load tables, and, uh, and you can have it create an example table. Um, I probably should have done this to begin with. That would have saved us a lot more time. Let's see, what does it give us? There we go. That looks like a lot more credible table than my I Love Sushi yeah, table. In any case, uh, so yeah, so you click Generate, and it gives you stuff here. And, um, and yeah, 
Sometimes uh, if you do something uh, like you press underline and generate, it'll tell you that you need to use other packages along with the table if you copy it over. So let's go ahead and copy this over and, uh, and see what we get. So, uh, so I'm gonna throw my table in here somewhere. Um, let's see, I'll put it here. And don't forget to add these packages. So I'll copy these and put them in my preamble. Preamble, by the way, is anything that happens before the begin document. So uh, command slash or control slash and kills the comment. And let's see what we have. And ta-da, there we go. We have a nice little table. Other things you can do, uh, inside a table, you put the, you know, if you put a P here, it gives its own page, just like before. H demands that it happens right there. And if I want to, I can put in centering. Because right now, if you notice, uh, it is actually aligned to the left. So I hit compile, and there we go. It moved it to the middle. And, uh, and yeah, there we go. So I, I guess I should also say what other things you can do. Uh, you put a caption. Uh, hello world, and uh, you put a label, table, uh, first table. I wouldn't put an exclamation point in there. Anyway, uh, and so you can call first table whenever you like. But yeah, there you go. And I guess that's everything I want to show you. And uh, yeah, thank you for hanging in there with me. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll pop back to uh, me, I guess. Uh, like, me like two weeks ago. Anyway, take care. So, uh, that's figures and tables. Uh, and that's all I was asked to show you. Uh, so, um, with this, uh, it's been nice seeing you guys. And, uh, and yeah, um, I hope you learned something today. Take care.